Fishermen off Lampedusa knew all about African migrants. They regularly rescue them. But it's taken a momentous tragedy for Europe to realize it doesn't really have a common policy. Most of what's on the books is about keeping migrants out, not saving human lives. As the divers plunge off uh, that Sicilian island in search of corpses from last week's shipwreck and the death toll approaches 300, Europe's interior and immigration ministers have been meeting this Tuesday in Brussels to discuss future rescue operations and uh, the delicate topic of how to share the burden. We cannot deal with this tragedy alone. We must face it together with Europe. We must give answers to those who flee, need protection, and come here for help. But how much solidarity are Europe's mainstream parties willing to show with the far right breathing down their collective necks? Will reform make Europe an ever greater magnet for economic migrants desperate for a better life or for political asylum seekers like the Syrian refugees who went on a brief hunger strike in the French port of Calais last week. Can those who call for a federated continent rise to this challenge? Today in the France 24 debate after Lampedusa, can Europe come to the rescue? And with us from Strasbourg, Dutch member of the European Parliament, Judith uh, Sargentini of the Green Party. Thank you for being with us. We want to thank uh, for joining us uh, from Copenhagen anthropologist Hans Luke, author of Darkness Before Daybreak, African Migrants Living on the Margins in Southern Italy. Uh, your op-ed piece is in uh, this Tuesday's edition of the International Herald Tribune. Also with us, Laurent Pinsol of the Eurosceptic, uh, how would you say it, neo-Gaullist. Perfect. Uh, uh, Debout La République uh, mm -hmm. Party here in France. And France 24's very own Annette Young. Welcome back. The France 24 debate where you can join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. The latest death toll from that fire aboard a makeshift boat off Lampedusa now stands at 274. France 24's team went to Sicily's southernmost island, closer to Africa than to mainland Italy. Dozens of beds are lined up close together on the second floor of one of the camp's barracks. The young men resting here are from Eritrea. Most have few or no personal belongings. All are exhausted after a gruelling ordeal. One of the survivors agreed to meet the Franz van Gett team outside the camp. The barbed wire here doesn't stop anyone from wandering outside. Out of sight behind some trees, Issa recounted the last tragic hours of his journey at sea. Uh, the lorry, be fair, be fair. It's all of you, 500 people. 500 people, 16 children, 85 women. All of you, these people, is be, 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 be fair, you know? all of you is reside. Be short. Okay. The coast was only a few hundred meters away. He poured in the sea four hours. So that average, 300, 60, uh, 350 people were killed. For Isa and the others, the journey doesn't end here. I'm looking for a country with a strong economy because we're told there's no work here. It's not all sorted out yet, but what I want is to go to Switzerland. They fled hunger, poverty and corruption. They're hoping Lampedusa will be a gateway to Europe. Hans Lucht, uh, where will those people wind up eventually? Um, they will uh, eventually uh, wind up probably in the underground economy of Italy and uh, find uh, work, uh, undocumented work there, unless they're given, of course, asylum. And uh, 6,000 uh, inhabitants in uh, Lampedusa itself. When you go there, what's it like? Um, I haven't actually been to Lampedusa myself, I have to say. Um, All right. When, you, when you've been uh, in southern Italy, when you've seen uh, the situation there, 
How much yes. are you feeling the pressure, though, uh, uh, of this migration? Apparently, it's three times more than normal since the start of the year, these migrants. That's true. It's uh, three times more than uh, normal. But you have, to, you have to look at the numbers also in a bigger perspective, I would say, like over the, the, the last 10 years, maybe. And if you look at them over the last 10 years, the numbers are not that uh, ama amazingly big. Um, actually, in 2008, it was about the same. But the, but the, the, the tragedy here, uh, the enormous loss of human life, has uh, really shocked the system in many ways. And um, it raises a lot of questions about um, what uh, could, be, could be done. It raises questions about um, the moral integrity of our policies and our institutions uh, in Europe. Uh, and it raises questions about whether we should maybe focus more on humanitarian interventions than on more control and surveillance. Judith Sargentini, uh, you're in Strasbourg where the European Parliament is meeting. Uh, that meeting of uh, immigration and interior ministers uh, this Tuesday is taking place in Brussels. Nonetheless, where you are now, uh, is there a sense that uh, things will be different from now on inside of the European Parliament when it comes to this issue? I, I would like to think that, but I'm afraid not. I'm afraid I hear myself in echo. But I'll try. Thank you. I'm afraid that um, that what will happen is that uh, Malmström and the ministers for um, for justice and home affairs will agree on more cooperation on border guards, maybe also save some lives, but not deal with the fact that there are a lot of refugees arriving in the south of Europe that are not getting the protection and the and the the care that they need, where the north and the west of of Europe, my own country, the Netherlands. Uh, uh, do nothing and just let um, and just let the South solve the problem. Laurent Pinsol, is this the case of an issue where it is Europe that has to solve it? Europe could be a way to solve it. And uh, Nicolas Dupont-Aignan has just... Uh, the leader of uh, your party. Yes, exactly. He just told that in an interview uh, yesterday. He explained that a great Europe could be a Europe that help Africa that could uh, build uh, a Marshall Plan to do for Africa what the United States have done to Europe after the Second World War. And that could be a great project because uh, we not only need to deal with the tragedy we are uh, dealing with uh, right now, we also need to help Africa to grow in the future and to fight poverty there because all the, the, the fights we've won against uh, poverty were won in Asia and not in Africa, as the United Nations uh, report has uh, shown us uh, recently. And do you agree uh, with uh, Judith Sargentini that uh, there has to be a new look in how we look at this issue, that we have to not just look at how to keep people out, but also how to help them more in terms of the immediate need, rescuing them, for instance? Uh, I think um, there are two ways. First, we need to Africa to help Africa to grow and to fight poverty there. Uh, that's long term. Uh, that's long term. On the short term, I think we need to keep our borders very safe because if we let more people get in, then more are going to try to go in Europe and then there are going to be more tragedies like the one we've had in Lampedusa. So we need to be rather strict and firm within uh, our borders and then uh, it would be a deal with the European population to help Africa uh, to, to grow faster and fight poverty. All right. How to be strict and firm about uh, keeping uh, the borders uh, is, is an issue that we're going to broach. Uh, remember that uh, just a few short years ago, Italy's prime minister was paying the Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi to keep immigrants out and take uh, back those that uh, Rome expelled. There was even exchanges of money for this. Uh, the tone this Tuesday in Brussels very different ahead of that meeting of EU interior and immigration ministers. I will suggest to the member states that they organize a big Frontex operation right across the Mediterranean, from Cyprus to Spain, for a large search and rescue operation. And I will ask for the support and the necessary resources to do it, to save as many lives as we can. 
All right, Frontex, the, the uh, organization that's uh, in charge of all of this. Uh, Judith Sargentini, uh, what do you think will be the outcome of that, uh, of that meeting in Brussels? Well, if it's going to be a strengthening Frontex, it means that we will have stronger border control and maybe rescue more people out of the sea. But Frontex actually has two aims that cannot be combined, namely stopping people to enter the European Union and rescuing people. And if I hear a colleague say in the debate say um, we should be strict on our borders, then we're forgetting that these are people that are fly fleeing from war, that are political refugees, and they have to choose between the bullet or the sea. And the answer of the European ministers in Brussels is going to be not much more than let's patrol our waters and fish these people out of the sea or push them back or make another deal with Libya because the nowadays government in Italy actually hasn't changed its tune and is still looking for deals with countries on the other side of the Mediterranean. Laurent Pincel, the number is staggering. 20,000 have reportedly drowned over the last decade trying to make it uh, to Europe. When you say seal the borders, what do you mean? When I said uh, seal the border, I think uh, the, the person just before me said it well. In fact, having more Frontex and more controls over uh, European borders enable us first to stop uh, and to reduce uh, illegal immigration. Uh, and uh, that's something Europe needs because right now we are not able to uh, integrate those peoples. And second, it could help us uh, preventing uh, those kinds of uh, uh, horrible things uh, that happened in uh, Lampedusa, in tragedy. But fortress Europe clearly is not working. I mean, while its walls are not as porous as it was, say, a few years ago, we still are having this situation that we saw, uh, you know, in the last few days, you know, tragedy on our doorstep. Yeah, but if we open and let more migrants come in, then more and more are going to try to come. And if we do not have any uh, frontiers, then we are going to have other tragedies. We need to, to, to send two signals to African countries. First, solidarity. We need to help them to grow. And that's something where Europe has done nothing in the last decades. And that's a shame for Europe. Uh, we could have done what the US have done for Europe, but we also need to be rather strict on our frontiers because otherwise more and more migrants are going to come and we are going to have more tragedies. tragedies. Judith Argentini. Yeah, honestly, I hear people speaking about migrants when we are talking about refugees. These Eritreans that drowned last week all would have gotten political asylum. We see Syrians now going overland to Egypt and to Libya to get onto boats to Lampedusa. And nobody is doubting that Syria is in war and that the neighboring countries are already taking the burden of two million refugees. And then we're talking about protecting our borders against migrants. No, we should resettle much more refugees from refugee camps all over the world, Africa, uh, the Middle East, uh, and give them a, a, a fair home. And understand, because I would like to give my colleague debater one thing, indeed we need to work on development of Africa and give people a fair chance. But nobody at the moment knows how to solve the dictatorship in Eritrea or the war in Syria. Even Obama doesn't know. Euro MP Giovanni Lavia from Silvio Berlusconi's PDL party, party echoing uh, the call for uh, solidarity among all European nations uh, that we heard uh, from his minister at the top of the show. At this moment, we want first to remember the victims, but also to look forward to the future and make it possible that Europe will provide solutions for this, as it is not possible for just one country to deal with it on its own. However, the leader of France's mainstream conservatives, whose UMP, by the way, is in the same voting bloc in the European Parliament, quoted this Tuesday by the French news agency as calling for, quote, sanctions and even exclusion for nations who don't control the outer borders of Europe despite their 
commitments to do so. It gets back to what uh, Judas Argentini was saying a moment ago about the sort of the um, ambiguity here between uh, what uh, the, this pan-European organization is supposed to be doing, Frontex. On the one hand, keeping people out. On the mm. other hand, helping them. And in this case, there seems to be uh, politicians who don't, who really want to focus more on just keeping them out. Yeah, but it's natural, given the, cr the economic crisis. It's natural after what happened in Lampedusa? It's natural to think that we need to reduce the influx of immigrants. Of course, it's a tragedy and we need to try to, to prevent those tragedies from happening ever again in Europe. And that's critical. Nevertheless, right now in Europe, public opinion with, I think, uh, a reason is not willing more migrants to come because unemployment has exploded in Europe for the last five years. And if we keep opening up our borders, in 10 years, we will have only far right uh, persons at the head of governments in Europe. So that, if we want to, to, to stop this direction, we need to be stricter. And that is why national governments so jealously protect their sovereignty over these issues, because it is such a hot electoral issue. Mm -hmm. They know that they can go into an election campaign saying, look, we've done this in terms of reducing the number of refugees or, you know, we, these days we sh steer away from using the word illegal immigrants, but, you know, immigrants who have entered through other ways apart from going through the legal process or legal channels. So it's clear that trying to reach a common agreement among 28 nations all of whom are in some sort of uh, economic stress, be it greater or lesser, depending on who they are, well, obviously, you're not going to reach a, a common agreement on, on this very, very sensitive issue. All right, Annette Young is in the studio. She's not a fly on the wall in that Frontex meeting. She's predicting that it could be quite stormy in there, from what you're saying. 24 out of 28 nations uh, against changing asylum law. Hans Lucht, uh, when you uh, take a look at where the final destinations are, uh, for the migrants, 70% traveling uh, to, uh, f I guess, their choice destination, of course, is Germany because uh, of the economic uh, conditions there. Um, uh, then France, Sweden, Britain, Belgium. When you look at where these asylum seekers want to go, what does it say about what Europe should be doing? Hans looked. All right, we seem to have lost the connection there. Judith uh, uh, Sargentini will get your reaction after a quick break on this. After a quick break, stay with us. Much more to come here on France 24.